Okay, welcome, welcome. We're back. So today we're going to start on the last kind of unit of this course, and that's going to be encryption. So this is uh, this isn't really uh, one of the features exactly of Python, although the, Python does have built-in encryption modules, but we're going to start with the basics here and um, with encryption we're going to do uh, Caesar cipher first so this is a very common whoops uh, this is a very common uh, thing that students do uh, in computer science and so what is it? Well, the reason why it's called Caesar cipher is because apparently when um, this pen is really annoying, for some reason it just keeps bringing up the menu. Uh, so what it is, is uh, Caesar in Roman times used to have to send private messages or secret messages to people. And the way they would do it is they would shift the letters. So in other words, you'd have the alphabet. OK, so A, B, C, D. Now, I know that perhaps the alphabet in those times were, was different, because I'm pretty sure they used Latin back then. Uh, but we're just going to go with English alphabet, F, G, H, I, and so on. And, um, well, actually, it'd probably be a good thing if I did the whole thing. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Um, so now, in English, our alphabet is 26 letters long. Let me write a secret sentence, and let's say something like, uh, how about um, the money is in the Okay, so the money is in the, let's say, the safe. Okay. So now we have to pick a, uh, a shift value. And uh, let's pick three. Okay, so let's start with T. So there. So we'll add three. So one, two, three. So it becomes W. Let's go to H. And let's add three, one, two, three, and it becomes K. Let's go to E, one, two, three, and it becomes H. We'll, we'll leave the space, although, listen, here's the thing, is that really we shouldn't do this because this is a bad idea. Uh, but for now, just for teaching purposes, uh, we could leave it. But actually, I'm going to tell you when we write this program, uh, we should not. And because then it then the space becomes a special character, but really it's not. And the reason it's not is because here, watch this. Because when we do this, I, I think you you can see now that we're gonna have to we're we're adding numbers, right? We're adding, we're going one, two, three. But well, you can't add to a uh, a letter, but you can add to an integer. So if I go into IPython, right? And I, um, let's say for example, uh, why is this taking so long? Okay, here we go. So if I go, let's say the letter A. So what is the letter A as a number? So I would say ORD, uh, let's go capital here. ORD A is 65. So now if I go 65 plus three, well that's 68. So now if I go CHR, 
uh, 68, and it gives me the D. So I've, sh I've, I've been able to shift it. So the question now is, um, what's the ordinal of space? And the answer is 32. So, I, so in essence, we should not treat uh, a space as a special character. Because then, you see, the problem is, is that, so if we go back here, when we do the encryption, if we uh, have space as, uh, as a special character and we don't encrypt it, then you're going to know what, where all the words are. You're going to know where all the words are, and that's not good. That makes it much easier to try and... Uh, but, you, but you can still do that essentially, and the reason you can still do it is because the space is the most uh, popular character in English. So, in essence, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, what, after we use Caesar Cipher, what character is the most common character? And then you can pretty reliably say, then therefore that must be the space. So this, this discussion is really related to trying to break or unencrypt Caesar cipher if you don't know what the shift is. Now, it's not that tough. Uh, so, but nonetheless, this is the beginning of encryption. So, um, now I don't actually know what that would be. So I'll have to go here and look it up. So if I went 32 plus 3, What's CHR of uh, 35? OK, so it's hashtag. So if I go back here and I go, now this becomes hashtag. So now we go to M and go 1, 2, 3, and that's a P. And go to O and go 1, 2, 3, that's an R, and so on. So what I'd like you to do is, uh, and now in order to do this kind of in a nice way, um, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'd like you to write this secret sentence not as input, but rather type it into a file. So just use your editor, whatever editor you're using, and make a secret sentence, like something like similar to the money is in the safe. It can be whatever you want it to be. But then save it uh, and call it, let's say, uh, uh, call it secret.txt. And so now that this file contains this string. And then write a Python program called uh, encrypt.py such that it's going to read this file, read the contents, go through it, and encrypt each line by some predetermined shift number. Like in, in this case, that I'm, do, I'm using three. So now the question is also, the other problem is, uh, what happens when you get to here? If I go one, two, three, uh, where am I? Right? And the answer is you really don't have to worry about it because, watch this, we're not going to make it loop around. We don't need to make it loop around because we're, us we're using the ASCII character set. And so if you went, um, for example, ordinal of, well, what's Z? Z is 90. So what's CHR 93? It's just a bracket. It's a square bracket. So that's fine. So really it's, 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 it's not really a concern because sometimes, sometimes students think like, okay, well, does that mean I'm going to have to, uh, after I get to the end, after I get to Z, does that mean I'm going to have to go, you know, 1, 2, 3 and get to C? And the answer is no. Just use CHR and ORD, and it should be fine. And the nice thing about that, by the way, is that even exclamation, even punctuation and whatnot is going to work. So for example, uh, oops, if I, if I was to say, you know, what is uh, like a period, for example, right? 
What's the ordinal of just a period? And that's 46. So what would be CHR of 49? Three more. And that's just going to be the number one. So that's, that's nice too. And by the way, you know, like what if your message contains digits? What if, what if it contains numbers? Still not a problem. It'll still work because they're all within the ASCII character set. Um, now here's a question. What if you get to the end of the ASCII character set and you, and you try to add three? So uh, in that case, let's just see here. <coughs> um, I know the last character is, uh, it goes from 0 to 255. So if I did, let's say I did uh, 254 or something, what's that going to be? So notice that's not a P. That's some kind of a, uh, usually it's a, no, it's a character which you cannot type from your keyboard. So it's, and you know, like if I did, you know, 255, again, well actually, so that, hmm, I think that might be some kind of a character from, uh, wait, can we go past this? Let's go to like, Oh, right. This is Unicode. Um, so Python 3 is not limited to the 0 to 255 ASCII character set. So I don't think we need to worry about this. So um, yeah, for this assignment, just assume that we're, you're not going to hit the end uh, of the character set. So. You're good. So why don't you pause the why don't you pause the video now and try and write this program called encrypt.py. Now what's it supposed to do? Well, it's supposed to, like I said, read this file here, the secret.txt file. But then what's it supposed to do? Just, you know, um, write the contents of this to the screen encrypted? No, no, no. What it's going to do is it should create a file called in, uh, I'm not spelling this right, in crypted dot, or maybe, you know what, instead of having a different file name, let's use the same file name. Let's call it secret dot enc for encrypted okay so don't use a different file name so this one's called secret.txt so that's plain text the money's in the safe but after you run this program it should create this file secret.enc and you're gonna have to open this file for writing okay and it's going to ASCII shift or it's going to shift all these characters by some predetermined amount. By the way, it doesn't have to be three. And it's going to now write this file out. So when you run your program, really you should see no output. You could maybe have a print statement say, you know, encryption is complete and say and tell the user where the encrypted file now is located. Maybe you might want to print out the name of this file just so that the person can see where it's located. But that's it. That's all it should do. And then you can, after it's finished, which will take a fraction of a second, and then you can go and take a look at uh, the file with your editor and see how jumbled it looks. Now, before you start this, I want you to, I want to give you a warning that the next assignment we're going to do is the exact opposite. So then you're going to write a program instead of called encrypted, encrypt.py, you're going to write a program called decrypt.py. And then it's going to open this file, the encrypted one, for reading now. And then it's going to create uh, secret.txt for writing. And so in other words, what, what we will do is after we have encrypted it to secret.inc, we can actually manually go and 
delete this file. We can delete secret.txt and then we can run our decrypt program and the decrypt program will change the encrypted program, uh, sorry, file back into the original text and write that text to disk. Okay? So uh, do the encrypt one first. Okay, so pause the video now and give it a shot. Good luck. Okay, well, I hope you were successful in um, writing that program. And we'll go over the solution as well as the solution to uh, decrypt it next lesson. See you next time.